This is the Microsoft Cloud Show, episode 62. In this episode, CJ and I are going to look back at our 2014 predictions and look forward to 2015. Recorded live December the 31st, 2014. Welcome to the Microsoft Cloud Show, the only place to stay up to date on everything going on in the Microsoft Cloud world, including Windows Azure, Office 365, SharePoint, Exchange, Link, and related technologies. Just the information, no marketing, no BS. I'm Andrew Connell. And I'm Chris Johnson. And we're just two dudes telling you how we see it. Good morning, CJ. How are you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, how about you? Doing good. It's been, gosh, has this been about a month since we've sat down and done this? Pretty much. I think it was, uh, I think we recorded the last episode like the 8th or the 9th of December, the one or the last one that we were together for anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was a long, yeah, you're right, the 9th of December. That was, it's been, what, uh, so it was that 22 days. Uh, that's a big gap for us. And we, we recorded a bunch of them together. We recorded a bunch of episodes and then we did a bunch of like our little banter and stuff and strung them together for three ones that we released. And then the plan was to record another one last week uh, and release it the last week of the year. Uh, and then um, I know that was that was right when you got back from your vacation, your family vacation down in Mexico, and right when you got back, that's when I got a baseball bat to the head and got the flu. Um, yeah, and I I was like, you know what, I'm just not interested in doing anything today, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I got your text, and you're like, not gonna happen. And I was like, no, that's cool. I understand. <laughs> Anyway, I'm really glad we've, uh, we've we've we're back together. Yeah, man, it's a uh, this will be this will be fun. So. Um, I guess what we've been up to, what, what have you been up to lately? Why don't you tell me a little bit about what, what you've been doing, then we'll dive into the show. Um, so yeah, December's been um, December's been a nice finish to the year for me personally. It's um, I went away to went away on a family vacation down to Mexico in early December, which was uh, which was really or mid December I should say, and uh, which is roughly around the time of my birthday. So it was nice to have a a nice uh, birthday uh, in the sun and the sand down in Mexico. Um, and then got back um, and uh, went, you know, pretty much straight into Christmas and things. So it's been pretty relaxed, um, but really just getting on a, from a work perspective, really just getting ready for next year, cleaning up a pile of to-do items in my inbox and really just clearing the plate so that um, come really next week, uh, which is kind of the, I think the 5th of January, uh, really just hitting it, hitting it hard. Yeah. Oh, um, one thing I'll note is we did a, we did a. Um, I recorded a wrap up episode um, with my whole team on the on the Office three sixty five uh, team at Microsoft with Jeremy Thake on the three sixty five developer podcast, um, which just you know I won't get into all the details of what what it, what it included, but the short the long and the short of it is we did a wrap up episode on um, what we've all been up to this year and and a, a very short uh, summary of what each of us have been working on. Um, <clears throat> so if anybody wants to know more about what I do at work, then that's probably the thing to go listen to. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. It's uh, episode twenty-seven of the Office three hundred and sixty-five developer podcast. That I didn't uh, even notice that my phone had downloaded that until uh, yesterday, so I haven't listened to it yet. It'll be interesting to to catch up on that. But um, so let me ask you ask you one more before I kind of give you my update. Uh, one more question: What was so two or three two or three things here? I guess these will be our our picks for the show. Um, you had a birthday since we last uh, spoke, and we also had uh, Christmas. So, what would if you had like two or three things to say? What was your geeky present that you're thrilled with? And then what was like just one or two, two or three things that like you were like going, oh yeah, in the last couple of weeks, here's what's new and under my tree or in my pocket now that uh, that's gotcha. cool to talk about. Um, I would say the geekiest, coolest thing that I did receive was a pair of, uh, this is going to be completely nerdy and people will laugh, <laughs> but hey, go to town. I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, is a pair of CH product flight pedals for my PC. <laughs> like, and why did you get those? <laughs> <laughs> I may have a small addiction to uh, Elite Dangerous right now. Uh, video game. And um, Yeah, the video game. So... Um, yeah, I've banged on about enough about the, the game in the past episode, so I won't go into it again. But uh, yes, I get a pair of flight pedals to complement my um, 
throttle and flight stick. So you've got you've got the pedals, you've got the flight stick, you've got the throttle, you've also got the the uh, head tracking, head tracking as well. Yep. All, head tracking. Brand new computer. You had a you had a uh, hilarious post on I think it was on Facebook where it was the stages of denial and it's how how much a what about a forty or fifty dollar video game how much it actually has turned into being. Oh yeah, totally. It's the 11 stages of elite dangerous addiction. It's called. <laughs> and, um, I think I'm at stage, I've just passed stage nine, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and stage 10 and 11 are pretty big steps. So, uh, stage 10 is get an Oculus Rift mm-hmm. for VR, a VR headset which apparently changes everything and I'm totally excited about getting one. There's a wicked video on YouTube of a guy using that for for Dilly really Dangerous. It's pretty cool. The only the I've I'm waiting mm. because the only downside of them right now is they're not very high resolution. Mm. Um apparently it's totally immersive and just completely amazing. But um people are saying uh it could do with a resolution boost before mm. it gets perfect. So I think I'm going to wait off wait on that. I mean that's like a that's a few hundred dollar purchase as well. So yeah. Um, so there's that. That's stage ten, and then stage eleven is moving house, so that you've got a fresh, so you've got a dedicated room for Elite Dangerous. <laughs> that's, and, a, that's a bit much. And I showed my I showed my wife Vicky, who's like the coolest person on the planet in this regard, and she just looked at me and was just like, "Oh hell no!" <laughs> <laughs> Your house was on the market recently, so <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I said to her. I was like, "Hey, well, if it happens to be on the market, and we happen to move, and it happens to have a a perfectly." you know, dark room with excellent power <laughs> and sound baffling. And it would be perfect for a simulator for Elite Dangerous. What's there to lose? <laughs> I don't think she was really biting. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Hey, huh. it's it's better than my threat to buy a uh, 737, an old 737 cockpit and attach it to the side of our house. So, <laughs> <laughs> I th- I found one on eBay too. Oh my god, that's awesome! Um, that th- let's just put it this way: they are not cheap. No, I would, <laughs> and I think shipping will be a bit. I was just about to say that's like FedEx ground, like freight, freight. Or, no, not FedEx ground. You get FedEx freight. <laughs> Seriously, I found a. I, I think it was a. Yeah, it was an old seven three seven cockpit on eBay, and it's big. Like it's the whole front end of the aircraft. Jeez, <laughs> I gotta go see the guy's profile. That's actually selling it. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from, but it just blew my mind. And I showed Vicky and she was like, you gonna what? <laughs> <laughs> it's when I catch him. I think that would be like, you'd be the coolest dad in the entire city. Oh like, God. You know, everybody would want to come play and uh, it'd be so awesome. But uh, anyway, I, I digress. So that's the, that's the geekiest, uh, that's the geekiest Christmas thing. Uh, the geekiest Christmas thing that I got. Yeah. Any, any honorable mentions? Um, I got Chris Hadfield's new book called uh, You Are Here, Yeah, which is Commander Hadfield is the Canadian astronaut, ISS, space oddity, rendition, all of that. Plus he tweeted me from orbit, which is like, oh my God, totally cool. <laughs> Print that tweet out, frame it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It wasn't quite as good as his exchange with William Shatner, which was uh, totally priceless. Which but one was anyway. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, William Shatner was like, uh, you know, hey, you know, something about you know what's going on up there or something any 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 and chris commander hadfield basically tweeted back like orbiting the planet no signs of life or something <laughs> like that it was just it was priceless <laughs> um which so he's put a, a new book out called uh you are here around the world in 92 minutes and it's basically a collection of photographs that he took uh on orbit and it basically goes all the way all the way around the world mm. um it shows you all these different parts of the world, and some of them are just breathtaking. Like, it's amazing. Mm. And there's a couple of uh, New Zealand shots in there. One of Mount Taranaki, which is um, the volcano, uh, which is right next to the city where my wife grew up. So that was kind of cool. Um, and there's some others in there as well. So, it's yeah, it's a beautiful book, and, and but it's it's not a story. It's a, it's full of photos plus captions about the area of the world. Mm, that's on my list. Yeah, I wanted to. I, I forgot. I had seen a preview of that coming out, and then I saw you tweeted something about that or, or put it on Facebook. And it was, it's back on my list. Yeah, so. no, it's excellent. How about you? Uh, let's see. So I guess leading up to Christmas, uh, I walked into the 
uh, AT&T store and found that for the exact same price, I could ditch my existing um, hotspot <clears throat> and uh, pick up two brand new phones. And so upgraded the phones for both wife and I and loving the new phones and um, then treated myself to a new a new tablet as well. But um, as far as Christmas goes, the the by far the coolest thing that I got, which is again very nerdy, very geeky. Um, my friends know this that I'm a big Lego fan, but my wife was able to find the sold out and very hard to find Batman tumbler. Oh yeah, N- um, nearly 1,900 pieces in five books, the five instruction books to build it. It is awesome. 17 inches long, six inches tall. The details yeah, so are epic. I saw your post on Facebook. It looks really cool. It took me about six hours to get through, um, but it was it was very cool because I had we we commandeered the entire dining formal dining room table in our house. My daughter got a couple Lego sets. My son got a couple Lego sets. I got mine. My wife would get up like the day after Christmas. She'd walk in. There I am having a coffee. There the kids are having their apple juice, and we're all sitting here working on working on Legos. And we're all the the coolest part. My daughter is just ripping off like entire scenes from the Lego movie. That was just. Oh, it was that's gr- glorious. I think I might have said the cloak of Bendaid about 30 times in the, over Christmas. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, hey, I just um, I just found that tweet. Oh, uh, it says so. Uh, William Shatner said uh, tweeted Commander Hadfield and he said, are you tweeting from space? Question mark. And then uh, Chris Hadfield replied, yes, standard orbit, Captain. And we're detecting signs of life on the surface. <laughs> That's awesome. It's uh, like Captain. Uh, yeah, oh God, it's like uh, the, Captain Kirk and the real Captain Kirk. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, so, back so, to you. Yeah, so that was the geeky thing, and then the other thing that um, I've been wanting this for years, and I, I think you've got this set up too. But I've been wanting it for years. I've never had the the guts to actually pull the trigger because it's not exactly a cheap purchase. But um, parents gave me a Christmas check as my big Christmas present, and so I went and promptly spent it and have the Bose Companion Five computer speaker set up. That oh, yeah. is such an epic upgrade from a Dell yeah. speaker bar that sits under your monitors. It is. Oh, dude. Yeah. I have the Bose system in my office and it's brilliant. It is amazing. I, yeah. It's beautiful. So I love it when the kid, when the family's out and I just crank it and start just coding away or whatever. But it's been good. So um, nice. Good break. Good, uh, good break. Even, even battling the flu over Christmas for the thir- three out of four years I've been sick on Christmas Day. So. A lot of fun. Oh, dude, remind me not to come around to your house for Christmas. Yeah. Between the flu yeah. and, strep, and strep. So this time it didn't involve a visit to the emergency room, so I'm good. Yeah, nice. But, hey, um, well done. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I got that going for me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, hey, this uh, this episode, enough enough kind of shooting the breeze a bit here. Um, in this episode, uh, you and I were going to kind of look back a little bit and look forward a little bit um, on, uh, on some predictions and stuff. And um, let's first talk a little bit about our 2014 predictions. And I figure, you know, why don't we do, there's a, there's a podcast I know that the, the two of us um, both listen to off and on. And I know that what they did is they kind of scored their predictions on a, a full point scale. So either zero points, a half a point or one point to see, you know, how you did and on the whole thing. And um, we each had five, we had, each had five predictions we did for 2014 that were published. We published them in episode 11. Um, and so let's go through those and let's kind of give a quick little scoring and see how each of us did and then we'll transition to the 2015 ones how's that sound yeah that sounds good okay so let me kick it off with your first one so your first prediction was uh you said the hockey stick cloud effect 2014 calendar year is where organizations will sort of get out of their nerves doing stuff in the cloud so that's what you said that was a quote from the transcription so it might might have been a little (laughs) jumbled there but um yeah yeah so 2014 uh companies were going to stop you know being so stuck on prem and, and you know open up to the cloud more. So how do you think you did yeah. on that one? Um, so how are we going to score ourselves? Should we give ourselves like half a point for moderate success and and one point for total success? Um, yeah, it's, I mean total success. I don't know if it's, if anything can be really absolute. There's only one or two things yeah, that fair. we have there. But you know if you feel like it's like yeah, I pretty much I think I got that one. Obviously you won't okay. get 100 percent on this one. I think um, I do. I do think this came this this came true. I think. There's still, don't get me wrong, there's still tons of organizations who are still nervous about going to the cloud. But I feel like this last year was was the first year where it was not dismissed as a as an option, right? Where people were were serious about 
the decision and and about the discussion about whether the cloud was right for them and so um definitely from you know from where i sit work wise and in my profession like the discussions have gotten tons easier and and organizations are getting it they realize that it's inevitable and really it's just a matter of putting their plans together rather than dismissing it entirely so i do feel like this last year was was a big um was a big transitional year for organizations in, in deciding to move to the cloud um i don't think it was necessarily the first year where it was uh ultra amount of usage yet right but i feel like it was them getting over the bridge yeah i i agree I, i'd give you a full point on that one too because it's a i think that you've seen a, a, a lot more companies well first i mean the adoption of 365 is blowing up we see that the cloud news is everywhere you see cloud disruptions um really impacting a lot of businesses not just startup businesses but a lot of enterprises as well um so i think it's a yeah i, I would agree that i think companies have gotten a lot more uh, open about using the cloud and we still have it, you know it'll be, it'll be nice to see when government i think catches up and changes rules and regulations around certain uh verticals and industries that are have trouble going there because of where data sovereignty has to be and all that kind of stuff so yeah I, I, it'll be nice to see when that stuff changes there's a lot of that to work out yet yeah okay so that was my first one uh to your first one your first one last year uh, your prediction was Office 365 will settle down a good bit, performing updates, communicating updates, and predictability. Yeah, I think that I, I'm not going to say that I get it. I'm going to get a full point on this one because I think three. I think there was significant strides that were made here. Um, when we made when I made this prediction, uh, we were at the at the time when um, Microsoft was making changes to the client side, st the the like the master page and stuff like that in Office 365 and SharePoint Online, and it would break stuff or they would do it, it would break custom solutions that people made they would do other changes that would impact customers and i think that there's been a, a really good dialogue that's happened this year and we've we've made it we've made a lot of progress both on the microsoft and on the customer side but i think that you know we've got other issues that are new issues that are showing up like the fact that <clears throat> i know there's some frustration where features are being cut and the latter quarter in this last quarter that seemed to kind of come out of the blue and catching people off guard. So mm. I'm only going to give myself a half point on that because it's almost like we've traded an old problem with a new problem. So, yeah, but part of that is I think you got your prediction mostly right. My, my take on it is you got your prediction uh, mostly right. It's just Microsoft hasn't necessarily delivered perfectly on all of them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, you, you know, like there's been huge strides and update in the way updates are done. Um, certainly around communicating updates, like with the with the roadmap and um, the sort of the more transparency about what's coming, but then falling short on a few things like the cuts that you mentioned, stuff like that. So, you know, I think you'd, your your intent was one hundred percent bang on, and um, and Microsoft's t intent on delivering was one hundred percent bang on. It's just they haven't quite lived up to your standard. <laughs> <laughs> if I only I ruled the world. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I'll, I guess you're going to give me a point on that one. Yeah, I think so. I think like you're you're uh, yeah. I think I think it's progressed a lot. Cool. Uh, okay, so another one I have uh, another one that you have. Your second one was Microsoft will win over uh, AWS and Google for enterprise cloud in a big way. Yeah, this one was pretty bold, right? Because um, AWS is obviously still the leader in terms of volume. Uh, and the cloud computing space, um, and then Google uh, more of a entrant in the enterprise cloud computing space, I suppose. Is a way to summarize it. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was pretty. I thought I thought uh, this last year may have been the year where um, Microsoft completely trampled over AWS in the enterprise cloud space. I don't give myself a full point on this. I think probably a half point at best. Uh, the reason I say that is I think. Azure is making phenomenal strides, right? And usage is skyrocketing and adoption is skyrocketing and all that sort of stuff. But I don't think they're quite there yet. Mm. Um, I don't think they surpassed, which, and in my prediction, I said Microsoft will win over. So I think they've made, I think uh, they've made enormous strides towards it and they're doing really great things. Um, but I don't think it's, that prediction has paid off this year. Mm. Um, I think they've still got a little way to go um, before it's a comp before Microsoft takes number one spot in the enterprise cloud over AWS. Cool. 
That's I think good. they've got all the bits of the puzzle, yeah. and I think they're they're going to head towards it, but I don't think they quite made it this year. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. Good prediction. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, number two for you, Azure will grow again on the Azure on the Azure uh, topic. Azure will grow significantly, beating out AWS and Google in the enterprise enterprise cloud. You know, Gosh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, you know, I, if you when I look at the two quotes here, and again, I, <laughs> I copy these straight out of the transcript. It looks like my wordsmithing is going to give me a full point because Azure will grow significantly. That definitely has versus to, when. Yeah, grow versus when. It, yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and so there's that piece to it, and, and I also said beating out AWS and Google for the enterprise cloud. So that part, I don't say that they beat them out. Um, I definitely think that Azure is winning over Google for the enterprise cloud because Google is really kind of just getting into the cloud market. Um, so I don't really. I would say if they if we had to score them this year, yeah, I'd put I'd put uh, Amazon. I put Google behind um, Azure. Um, mm. I don't know. I, I feel a little bit. I feel like I got a little bit closer to one point on that one than having a half a point. But yeah, I mean, Amazon's still considered the big dog uh, on and on campus. And but I, I'm. It's amazing looking back at what they've accomplished with Azure. I mean, I would just go back and look at like the the Azure team party, I guess, if they had had that at the end of 2014. If they had to rip off the list of all the stuff they shipped, I would have been, I was like going, please, you guys got to open the bar before you start going through this list. <laughs> it's yeah, totally. Take forever. It's take a while. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, yeah, no, I think, I think in general, both of these points, both these predictions, right? Azure are doing massive leaps and bounds and growing phenomenally. Um, but I still feel like they've got a little way to go yeah. to get past AWS. Yep. Okay, your third prediction was news about the final on-prem version of SharePoint, and from then on, series of we'll start having a series of cumulative update service packs and maybe feature packs. I'm going to give you a full point on this one. Yeah, I'm not so sure about a full point. Like, I, I feel like, well, hey, I'll take it, but um, I think... The final version of SharePoint. I don't think that's been made clear. That's true. I shouldn't have said that. That's because that is. It, and yeah. the next version, sure. Like, I think you know, Microsoft came out and said at SPC. So we recorded this back in what was it, December sometime last year? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or early Jan. Des I think it was December. December 2013. It was before I rejoined Microsoft and stuff. So I made this prediction without any insider knowledge at all. Um. And um, and I would say that at SPC, Jeff Tepper made it clear that there will be another version of SharePoint for on-prem that comes out. So it didn't. It felt his his announcement fell short of calling it the final version. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't think we can say that just yet. No. But I think the next version of SharePoint for sure. Um, and then I guess we'll have to wait and see about whether it's the final one. I don't personally. I think Microsoft will be silly. To not support their on-prem base, yeah. Um, but whether that takes the form of a whole different new version for many years to come, or if it's a series of CUs and SPs and feature packs, I don't know. Yeah, it, I, don't know. I think that since he made that comment too, I think I saw some other comments might have been from him uh, where he where uh, they basically committed to not just one, but they've said you know future versions. They have used the term plural, so. I don't think it doesn't sound like the one that that's coming out in the second half of 2015 is going to be the final one. It sounds like there's future ones, but um, yeah, you're right. It's I, I I give you I definitely give you a half point to that one. I think people are really going to be interested to hear the future of that when we get to ignite the ignite conference in Chicago yeah. in May. Definitely, <clears throat> yeah. definitely. So and it's you know it's it's funny because uh, back when there was only on-prem software, nobody ever asked about the version past the next one. Yeah, <laughs> it's was, it was like well, of course there's going to be one after the next one, right? Yeah, uh, like what? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but now people are interested. It's like well, there's going to be a next one, and then is there, is there going to be one after that? Is there a next next one? Yeah, all right. Let's well, be next next. Yeah. All right. Um, so your third point was on-prem SharePoint customers will look to other solutions. So I don't think that this is a wholehearted. Everybody's doing that. Um, I should have qualified. You know what I meant? Did I say everyone, or did I say part part of them? I'm not going to go back and try and change what I said to make it to make it seem like what I meant. But um, I think that yeah, there, there are definitely some customers that are that look to see that hey, you know that things are uh, in the actions that Microsoft has had over the course of the year, specifically the Office 365 uh, team, um, that it is definitely there building for the cloud first. 
and then they're going to on-prem second. We see that from stuff that happened at the SharePoint conference announcing the Office 365 APIs. We've seen the discussion from TechEd Europe uh, in the in October of 2014, where you guys talked more about um, having apps being more on a model using the Azure Active Directory model than using the ACS model, and uh, which doesn't really jive too well with people that are that are solely on prem. So I think that there are some customers I've looked at and said, okay, definitely this product is going building for the cloud first, not building for on prem first. And so some customers that want things like a good social story that don't want to go to the cloud um, are looking elsewhere to things like Jive or things that they can install locally or whatever. So mm. I think that I'm only going to give myself a half point on that one. But I do think that there are that some people have started to look at say, well, screw it. You know, we're going to look at best of breed instead of just going with a single overall uh, solution for everything. But um, yeah. I think this knits up well to um, I'd give you more credit than that. I think I think I think this goes to a larger point which is people are now looking uh, it's less about IT making the call on what they use and more in the business unit or the business users hands as well and you know making their own purchasing decisions about what tools they use mm -hmm. and so things are a bunch more flexible now I think you know you've got users choosing to use I don't know go buy Asana or whatever mm -hmm. you know and whether it be cloud or not um, and it's less about IT providing the service for them and so in that regard, I think there are people that are looking outside of uh, SharePoint um, on-prem to get their job done um, and looking at like point solutions for specific things and things that they can provision and set up themselves and buy and, and use. So, you know, I think it bubbles up to that general theme that's going on. Um, and uh, yeah, just more evaluation of what the right tool for the job is, I think. Mm, yeah, I think so too. I think we're seeing a lot more of that too in the industry. Just people just looking more for best of breed. They don't have to feel like they have yeah. to do complete vendor buy-in. I think that you know startups and stuff are so much more adapt. Right. Cool. Right. Um, okay. So your fourth prediction here was that we saw the last SharePoint conference in 2014. Full point, my friend. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. Do I need to say anything more on that? No. I think uh, I thought at. The yeah, <laughs> I thought at the time it makes no sense to have four different conferences for office products like uh, the link conference, the project conference, the exchange conference and the SharePoint conference. Yeah. To be honest, when I made this prediction, and tech I thought there was uh, and, and, oh, and tech yep. yep. To be honest, when I made this prediction, I thought we were going to end up with an office 365 conference. Mm -hmm. Like in all fairness, like. It was the SharePoint conference turning into the Office 365 conference and, and all of those others being absorbed and sort of assimilated. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think that would go away entirely and be replaced with, um, well, then be split, I guess, uh, between Build and Ignite. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, you know, in fairness, I think SPC did go away, of course. It was the last version. The last version. <laughs> <laughs> it, was the, it was the last on-prem version in Vegas. It went the same um, way as, as InfoPath. <laughs> nope, yeah, no yeah, future gotcha. versions. <laughs> right, no future versions of SPC. Um, but, I, you know, at the time I did think we'd end up with an Office 365 conference. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. So from, my, so from my point of view, like the background behind it, I don't think it, it happened in exactly the same way as I thought it would, but you know, end of the day, it did go away. You know, I, and I, I, yeah, I'm going to give you a full point on that one because I felt the same way. I felt that it was going to be the last one. And I also felt like we were going to be looking at an Office 365 conference. Um, I don't know. I'll be curious to see how Ignite goes uh, and mm -hmm. what the response is from customers, uh, both responses from customers, what the response is from the influencers, what the response is from Microsoft. I'm curious to see how the whole thing goes. I personally, I'm, I'm registered for it, but I'm personally on the fence if I'm going to cancel or not and go um, just because I wonder how much value that I know that, that with it being such a big conference, how much value you're going to get. Um, somebody like me is going to get out of it. Um, so, but it'll be, I'll be curious to see, very curious to see where this one goes. Yeah, it's like that with, you know, with any new conference, you're not sure what the feel of it's going to be like, who's going to go, you know, whether it's all going to gel and knit together, whether it comes whether it gets pulled off really well. Of course, I'm, you know, I have a vested interest in it and uh, I want it to go really well, of course. Um, and I think, you know, uh, we'll be doing everything we can to make that happen. But, you know, end of the day, it's how people feel about it. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, um, so that was my number four. So your number four 
is SharePoint brand is diminishing Office 365 to take the lead. I'm going to give us nailed it. Yeah, I'm going to take that more of a, <laughs> of a point on that one. I, I think that this is going to be uh, there, not only did this happen so much more now, um, but I think that you're going to see the pedal get even pushed down even farther on this one going forward. Um, this is SharePoint just, I don't think that <clears throat> to me, SharePoint the brand doesn't really make a whole lot of sense anymore. SharePoint is a name for a collection of enterprise capabilities and features that come out of the box. Um, but I, and I think that you're, it, it's going to be harder uh, for people to be able to. Well, I should, that's getting into the prediction stuff, but I think that I think that going that looking back, that people are talking more about Office 365 as a whole and less about the SharePoint piece of Office 365. They're looking at it more as a whole. We th- see things like the app launcher, which span across the entire product. We see things like yeah. um, how the Office 365 APIs really don't do anything with SharePoint. They do something with everything but SharePoint and 365. So. Yeah, I'm. I, I think that we that that definitely is was the case in 2014, and it's not going to be a 2015 prediction, but I think it's going to be even farther in, going forward. Yeah. So, okay. okay. Last. No, go ahead. Last. Yeah. Last predictions that we both had. This turned into a wager. It certainly did. So and uh, it was so, it was for yeah. the CEO, the next CEO of Microsoft. At the time, we didn't know, and it wasn't decided until what was it February? I think. Ha uh-huh. ha. Yeah, and we made a fifty dollar bet. Oh, there they are. There's my fifty bucks. I see. We're doing this over Skype. I can see my fifty. Is it still going to be there when I get to Redmond next week? Oh, of course it will be. But of course it will. Will it make it to my pocket? Oh, yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) That is a whole different kettle of fish. I'm taking a screenshot so we can post it in the blog. (laughs) So the prediction was is that who's going to be the next CEO of Microsoft, and you said. That you thought you were hoping that it was going to be Stephen Elop. Yep. Your you your prediction was it was going to be Kevin Turner. My hope yep. and my prediction was both for Sachin Adela, and I nailed it. And you you certainly did, sir. Yeah. And you know I'm I am extremely happy that you nailed it. <laughs> uh, I was trying to play the the safety card, I suppose, which was um, I thought it was going to be. I hoped it was going to be Elop, but I thought it was going to be Kevin Turner. Yeah. And in hindsight, uh, I'm extremely glad you got it right. I am. I, 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 I'm more than happy to give you your 50 bucks on that. <laughs> I'm so, good for it, man. One point for me, <laughs> zero points for you. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I think that, I think that um, I'm just looking at our score here and I beat you. Uh, was it one, two, th- I beat you four to three. Um, Ooh, nice. But um, I, you know this guy what he has done in the short time frame with microsoft and i know you know a lot of products are in, in the works for a very long time and a lot of stuff was you know that was announced uh under his tenure uh was stuff that was well in the works before he got there um but the tone of the company changed almost overnight and there are things that i never would have predicted like him standing on stage and saying 20 percent of all the virtual machines that we run in azure are linux vms yeah, that that kind of stuff, or saying I don't care what kind of a customer you are of Microsoft. If you have one Microsoft thing, if it's a hardware, or software, or whatever, then you're a Microsoft customer. You don't have to buy into the entire company. That I I find that to be so freaking refreshing. Love the guy. It's very very cool. Yeah, no, I agree. It's um it's been very refreshing, and uh, and I'm really glad, really pleased with how things are going with him. So it's um. I'm obviously bullish to see what see what comes next and see his leadership really take hold and and um, you know a lot of this year was about turning the ship or starting to turn the ship mm-hmm. and now putting the pedal down and accelerating is is um, or delivering I suppose you know mm-hmm. it's one thing make lots of headlines but it's another thing to follow through so I'm bullish about this year and I hope he's uh, Hope he's really successful. Oh my God! What the company's the company stock even sat around? I know Wall Street likes it too. The company stock sat around twenty to thirty for. Well, I know the entire time I owned it, unfortunately, but well, like ten years. Yeah, yeah. Under and then since then, I think what is it now? Is in the is it fifty or so now? So not quite. It dropped back a little. It got um it got up there, but it's now forty seven seventeen. Yeah, still huge bump. It was a, I know it was up. It was up pretty high for a while. So uh, cool move, but um yeah. Yeah, it was um, 
it's obviously good for shareholders too absolutely uh except for those of us who sold who are tired of waiting but anyway um yeah. <laughs> okay let's look forward to 2015 we we don't want to make it an epically long episode here so uh yeah um, we'll run through them reasonably quick. Yeah, because there's not a whole lot of explanation with them, but uh, we'll document and whatever. So why don't you give us your first? I've only got three predictions here. I had I struggle okay. with this this year because I, I didn't. I felt like I'd just be. I had more hopes than I did more uh, predictions, and I feel like I'd just be pulling stuff out of the air just to do it. But um, at any rate, yeah, no, fair enough. Well, I'll I'll pick three off my list here, and we'll we'll stick to our three. Oh, okay, that'll work. Okay, so my first one is uh, cloud related. Okay. Uh, some of the others aren't, so uh, not quite like last year's predictions in, in some ways. Mm-hmm. Cloud price wars slow down, and it becomes more all about the features. <laughs> so my idea behind this is that it becomes less of a race to the bottom in terms of who's got the cheapest storage and who's got the cheapest compute. Don't get me wrong, that the price cuts will still go, will still happen, I think. There'll still be a bit of back and forth. But the decision about whether you... You know what cloud service you go with and things will become less about price and more about feature differentiation and who does a better job yeah i think that's a that's that's quite that's a fair that's a good prediction there very this year seems to be you know most of the news was all about price so i think it'll be less about that yeah it's kind of yeah as you're saying that about you know, all i could think about was that song um it's all about the base you're like it's all about the features and less pricing so I just yeah, I also got all about the base, no trouble. But <laughs> <laughs> my five-year-old daughter sings that in the house. So anyway, right. nice, okay. Nice. What's your next prediction? I'll let you do, let um, you do all your three, and then I'll do my three. How's that? Okay, my second one is um, not cloud-related, but technology-related. Uh, Apple Watch is only a moderate success. Hmm. So I think this this could have been a phenomenally huge success for Apple if they'd done it a year earlier. Mm. But I think, I think uh, for the first time in many, many product category releases, they've balked the timing. Mm. Yeah. And, and pricing. And I think, and I th- well, yeah, pricing, but also timing. I think like there's a lot of other good solutions in the space now. Mm-hmm. And I think, they didn't jump the gun fast enough, right? They didn't get out quick enough, um, and others caught on, caught wind of it, or caught wind of the trend um, earlier, and um, and got out there. And so now, like, I think when Apple Watch releases, at least, it's going to be a bit underwhelming. Like, there'll be the there'll be the there'll be the diehard fans for sure, and they'll sell like hotcakes. But I don't think it'll be the blowout success that. Um, that'd be hoping for yeah i'm i'm really curious to see what they do with this i mean I, i'm i'm very curious about the pricing because i know they said it starts at 350 but you know that's yeah. that starts at 350 and so that's gonna be there could be pretty pricey but i yeah. i'm i'm with you i i'm i was hoping for one i was looking for one i was really i wanted to get one for myself and then i saw that that whole presser and i looked at it for a bit and i was like yeah this is really cool this is really interesting it's like God, I don't know because this really wasn't what I was really hoping for. But I, you know, yeah. watch that first quarter. Watch that first quarter after the release. Watch them sell out and have be hard to find. But then mm. I want to. I'm curious about the staying power at this one. So, well, I think there's there's so many other options, right? Whereas in the past, when the iPhone came out, there was no other option. Yep. Like that was the best phone on the market. It was truly when innovative. It came out. Yeah. It was truly innovative. And so now there's a whole bunch of other wearable solutions and options. And so people will. I think will not just leap in blind. They'll they'll start thinking about it some more. Yeah, I'd be curious to see this one. Yeah. I think it'll do okay. Don't get me wrong. I think it'll be fine, and th- there'll be the diehard base that'll buy them regardless. But I just don't think it'll be the blowout success that uh, it would have been a year ago. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so that's number two, and then number three. I think this year is going to be the year of the cord cutter, huh. and so for. This is more so a U.S. thing than I think a lot of other countries uh, that I know of anyway, where um, this year feels like it's got all the stars that are aligned for people that want to cut the cord for their TV cable companies and buy or subscribe uh, over the net um, to the shows that they want to buy. Mm. So like either whether it be Xbox or iTunes or Amazon or hbo direct or whatever it happens to be i think this year um is looking like 
uh, the content producers are also interested in going direct to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Like HBO uh, have announced that they're going to offer an untethered option, so to speak, yep. to be able to buy HBO Go from HBO as opposed to having to go buy a bloated, painfully expensive cable subscription to get HBO. Yeah. If you just want HBO. I Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. I mean, it's, I, I was really pumped to see when this whole thing with that movie, the interview and the hacking thing, and it wasn't on, then it was back on, and then it released on some theaters, but it went online. The thing that I was the most eager to see was what was the what were those online streaming sales going to be like? Because for me yeah. personally, I I hate going to the movie theater. I hate going to the movie theater when a new movie comes out because I hate just being interrupted with everything. I hate when people are talking around me. I hate you know not getting there early enough and not getting a good a good seat, not being able yeah, to pause seats. it. I got to go take. I got to go use a restroom and I'm going to miss part of the movie. Um, I. I hate them saying that our family does a tradition where we our our New Year's Eve is we go watch a movie and then we go out and we we'll get burgers afterwards and we get home before all the crazies oh. are going. So we're gonna go see Big Hero Six tonight and um, nice. Go, That's a great idea. Yeah, go get burgers. We did. The, it was I have. It was because yours truly was super lame on a New Year's Eve date when I was dating my wife. Oops, my current my shoot. God, that's gonna sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> my current. Only both past and present and future wife, I should say. But uh, when I was dating, when my wife and I were dating, uh, we went. We didn't have plans New Year's Eve. We went out to go see a movie. We walked out. There was a burger joint across, and I was like, "Going, oh, you want to get some dinner?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like, uh, "You want to just go there?" I was. Compl- I had no creativity. She's like, "Yeah, okay." And it turned into a cool little tradition. And now we're doing it all the time, except we've got little kids now, so we can't have to go see little kid movies on it. But um. We rarely go out and do our. We we now every once in a while go go out and like do a party kind of a thing. But I'm very much looking forward. You could to. you could always do the teenage thing. You could put them in the row in front, and then you guys could sit in the back row and make out. Mm, can't do it. I got a nine and a five year old. I don't trust her all the way up there. <laughs> but fair enough. But um, I, 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 oh, that sounds fun. Going back to what you said in your prediction, though, I you know what I would really like to see, and this kind of goes back to your Apple prediction about the watch. I personally, I want to see Apple come out with a TV. Or I want to see mm. someone come out with a TV that the reason I want Apple is I want to see the, I want to see the apps. To me, let's have I want to blow up the cha- no that sounds bad. Get rid of all the 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 current producers of all the content. I mean the Direct TVs, the Comcast, the Time Warners. Not a big fan. Let's get the people that are going through and actually building the content, writing the content, the Discovery Channel, the ESPNs, the Fox, the BBCs, the all those guys. Let's take all that content. Let's have them build an app. Let's put the app on my TV. And when I want to watch a TV, I don't watch a channel. I go to an app. And when a new show comes out, that show is released as of this time, like a movie. And I can go watch it right then, watch it live, which isn't really yep. live, but it's more or less recorded, kind of streamed. Sure. Or I go through and I watch, uh, I go do, I go watch the um, uh, previous recordings of it. And I'll pay for each channel that I want instead of paying a subscription that is covering 250 channels and I'm only watching six of them. Yeah. I think this is going to be like, um, you know, HBO, it's going to follow the HBO model. HBO held out doing this for the longest time, right? The only way to get HBO in the States at least was to buy through cable company Mm -hmm. and people despised it, right? For the longest time. And finally, I think the mathematician at HBO or the you know the financial forecasters and all that have finally got to the point where they where they've ticked the box to say okay now we can still now is the tipping point like if we make the decision now we will keep revenue uh, whereas if we stick with it longer we've got the potential to start dropping in revenue so I think they've finally got to the, this is complete you know guess right mm-hmm. but I feel like the mathematicians are saying or the financial modelers are saying now is the time that it's okay. Whereas in the past, I think it would be premature from a financial perspective, but now I think is a good is a good time. I think. I mean, there's so many different reasons why I think this is a good option here. I mean, part of it's we've been frustrated with it, but I think that uh, you see what the HBOs are doing. You see what the the newer guys like the Amazon uh, uh, Prime Video or streaming instant video. You see what Netflix. You see what Hulu is doing. You pay for subscriptions. Yep. You go watch your content. You see what the sport the, the different sport networks are doing or um, professional sporting. Uh, uh, leagues are doing as well. The NFL does it where um, you could buy a package through Direct TV next year, Direct or this year. I think Direct TV was selling the package without a subscription. You could buy just the NFL Sunday ticket. You could buy it straight from the NFL. 
Um, mm. I mean, where do where do these companies get their money from? That where do these where do these content companies get their money from? They get it from um, the different deals that they set up from the subscription rates from a Directv, from a Comcast, from a Time Warner, from an Xfinity. But then they also get it from the advertising companies. But what sucks is that you know the advertising companies you're broadcasting all this this advertising out to only a demographic that is going to watch that that TV show based on the ratings. If I were an advertiser, I'd much rather have like the Facebook or the Google model where I have much more data about that person that's actually getting my advertisement if they're buying the app and they're watching the content. I know who that is and I can target ads more to that person. And as a consumer, I'd rather have targeted ads than driving down the street and seeing crappy billboards for some, you know, injury attorney or something like that that I have no interest in. Let me see stuff that's targeted for, you know, hey, look. Here's this new Xbox game that you might be interested in, or here's a brand new Lego that's available on sale at this comp- at this business over here. Like, dude, that's targeted to me. I'm interested. Yeah. That's going to sell. Also, I'd, I'd rather pay a lot of money and just get rid of ads. Me too. I'd much rather pay more and get rid of ads. That's what bugs me about Hulu Plus is that you pay for a subscription and it still has ads in it. Dude, I'd pay three times as much if you just got rid of the ads. Yep. I don't know if that makes financial sense still. Maybe it has to be four times as much. Maybe it has to be twice as much. I don't know. But I'd pay a good deal of money more to not deal with that. I'm, anyway, I'm right there with you, man. I'm right there with you. So, uh, so yes, those are those are my three. Uh, you got the first one on. Uh, sorry, mine were cloud price wars slow down. Apple Watch only a moderate success. Cord cutter of the year. Then, um, I think it was it. That was the three. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Three. Very cool. Good predictions. Okay, so I've got three that are all, I guess, kind of. Uh, techie slash our world kind of thing. Um, so two of them are going to be, uh, one of them is going to be SharePoint focused um, because that's kind of where we come from. So um, God, I might lose a lot of friends by saying this. Uh, SharePoint developers will become more legacy type developers. So if you're going to stick and keep calling yourself a SharePoint developer, uh, I think a lot of, I think this is already happening right now, but I think a lot of people are going to look at you and just be like, and I'm not, no, this is no slam to anybody, but you're just like one of those people that says, I'm an access developer. I'm a notes developer. I'm a VB developer. You're like, nope, you focus on one thing and you do it. This whole thing of focusing on one specific technology and that's a technology that is founded on the old way of doing things, um, of doing things on-prem and not being more nimble and stuff. The people that focused on that, I just don't think it's it's that great of a... I don't think it's like that... I don't think it's good for you personally uh, career wise, I think you'll still, you know, have a long job, long career. So make plenty of money. There's still plenty of people that are out there that are notes developers that are, that are doing great. Um, yep. but it's not a forward leaning kind of a thing. And I don't think it's, it's something that is, uh, at least for me, it definitely is not something that I would, the way I would put my chips. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, I don't think those folks will be out of a job, like you said, right? I think there'll be plenty of work around for SharePoint developers for many, many, many years to come. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if uh, if if you want a future proof role and one that's you know you get to use the newest coolest stuff, then I think you've got to start making the leap. Yeah, I I agree. I think that everything is going everything's built for the cloud. That's where everybody is looking for new stuff to happen. And you can stay on prem and say that's where I'm going to focus. But I. Me personally, I'd much rather say all I do is Office 365 stuff. I don't touch any SharePoint on prem. And thankfully, I've been able to, that's been my business for the last few months, but, um, or more, six months plus. But it's, uh, I think that you can see more and more people doing that going forward. I think now it's also a good time for people to make that call. Like, I, you know, it's totally fine. If you just want to stay building SharePoint stuff on prem, you're going to have plenty of work, like I say. I don't think you're going to be out of a job anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think now it's a, if you do want to be just building stuff for 365 or doing you know uh, you know things using other technologies and stuff. Now you can actually make a viable business out of it. Yeah. Like there's enough there's enough going on that I think it's a uh, you know maybe in the last six or nine months max probably yep. you've been able to make that call and just do it. So I agree. I agree. Okay. So that's my first prediction. Um, my second prediction is this is going to be, I, I'm not, I have a hard time figuring out how exactly to phrase this, but essentially I think that the, the, the people that are specializing, um, in the, that have been more of the quote unquote Microsoft developers coming from the places like, um, SharePoint developers or office 365 developers or 
uh, Windows client developers or web uh, ASP.NET developers. I think that the majority of those people, we are not looking so much at staying just one vendor and having such one vendor lock into all this stuff. I think we're going to see people that are moving more to having much more cross open this into stuff that they're building. So for example, uh, Microsoft is already adopting this and they're really trying to get ahead of the curve on this by having tools that we can build iOS apps uh, inside of Visual Studio and building apps for Android inside of Visual Studio, adopting things like the Cordova platform and um, Xamarin and stuff. Um, also taking uh, uh, the .NET framework and going open source. But I think that there's a, there's many of there's many people that are out there. I'm definitely one of them who I'm still doing Office 365 stuff, but I'm not doing it so much with like these days. I'm not doing it so much with with uh, uh, so many Office so many Microsoft development products. I'm doing a lot of stuff with Node, doing a lot of stuff with JavaScript, doing a lot of stuff with Angular, a Google product that's building on top of it. Um, doesn't make you any less of a Microsoft person. It really opens your mind up. And I, from a personal experience, I think it's a good idea for people to, to really kind of embrace this because mm. it gives you a little bit better perspective on where things are, are, uh, are going um, and what other options that are that are out there. Um, it's been, yeah, I, th- I think it really, it, it will help. It not only, it, it not only was it going to help you be more marketable, but I definitely think it's also incredibly uh, good for, for Microsoft as well. Yep. I think the, um, when you go build stuff, it's in the past, it used to be what technology stack you picked. And now that stuff's just the glue between services. Yep. I totally agree. Right. And, you know, it's, I mean, maybe glue is a slight underestimation, but, you know, really what you're doing now is, building solutions using you know by gluing things together from a set of services whether that be data storage service or a document storage service or some sort of other service that processes data or something like that and um and now it's you know it's we're becoming a whole lot more technology agnostic about what that glue happens to be and you pick the best tool for the job Mm -hmm. yeah i agree I agree. I, I, this is this is going to build off on what we've talked about. Uh, for all of you that are listening, well, I guess everybody is listening that I'm talking to right now because otherwise you wouldn't be hearing me say this. Uh, I think CJ and I are going to are going to kind of steal a page from some of the other podcasts that are out there, and we might do a couple um, geek out sessions where they may not be so focused on just the cloud, but they might be in and the Microsoft cloud, but it might be just a complete random session uh, episode we talk particular- about. Particular. Like a topic, yeah. Like the SR seventy one Blackbird, maybe. Oh god! Don't <laughs> start me. Don't start. You know, you know, I won't stop. <laughs> oh man. Um, yes. Yeah, so- we'll we'll uh, we'll try and be clear in the title and mark those episodes very clearly, so that uh, if it's not a topic you give a crap about at all, yeah, you could skip. Yeah, yeah. You'll see the you'll see the geek out. Uh, we'll definitely put geek out in the title, so you'll. Um, I'm curious to see the metrics from that. Do a couple, do like two of them, and then see how many people downloaded it, and how many people actually, uh, how many more actually download. I'm curious to see which way it goes. Totally. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Okay, so my third um, prediction uh, for 2015, and this one is going to be hard to measure. Um, I don't really know how we can measure this when we come back to it, so I might just be setting myself up for a zero pointer. Um, But. I think a lot of companies, a lot of people are both consumers and companies um, have been so conditioned to looking for to a company to provide something to them in the sense of what is Microsoft going to sell me or what is Ford going to sell me or what is uh, Amazon going to sell me or Google going to sell me. Um, But instead now, I think that one of the things that we're seeing really take off are this concept of Kickstarters and this concept of the Indiegogos and this concept of um, startups of being able to have a much more small products that individuals are coming out and doing. Um, mm-hmm. We've talked about doing a startup that you know we we won't go there right now, but about doing a startup that you know something that we're working on. Um, I've got uh, some in my family who was full time with the company. She's gone full time now into building her own like uh, bath and, and beauty uh, products and stuff. And that's what she focuses on. She's got her own little business that she's doing. I got a ton of friends that are just, they've quit their main their mainstream job, quote, I'm doing air quotes around mainstream job, and have said, I'm gonna go do my own thing. And being able to kind of have their own 
uh, their own little personal marketplaces. These great sites like Etsy have kind of has spun, spun up around it. So yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I think that I think that businesses are going to be so much more open to do to doing these things with customers uh, uh, and customer and business and and with vendors and saying, I don't need to have a you know this thing coming from a Microsoft or something like that that I can have a little tiny point solution product that comes from these other guys. They only pay five dollars a month for, or I pay you know twenty dollars for or something like that. Yeah, I think that's going to be embraced more. I guess is what I'm saying in 2015. Yep. No, I think that's totally uh, that's totally valid. I think it's uh, you know whether it be putting yourself on the web and marketing yourself, creating the products, fulfillment, distribution, sell, selling, all that stuff has just all of the power has been disseminated uh, in such an interesting way recently. You know, for folks that want to create something and sell it, it's so easy now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We- right. Um, ton easier we've got this we've got this event um in where i live called uh, and it's, it's actually gone international now but it's called one spark have you have you heard of this just out of curiosity no so it's pretty cool um it, it's all about creators and it's, it's a week-long like kind of uh startup um micro business creator festival kind of a thing and what they do is they they block off a bunch of uh, this big area of, of downtown um, jacksonville florida and uh, people come in, they register themselves as creators, they put up little booths, and it's kind of like a little mini like festival slash conference where everyone goes through and they all they, they, they show their wares and, and you can buy stuff from them at the time, or they're looking for funding or whatever, and they, they register themselves, and then they have this whole voting model, and they've raised a bunch of money from these different VC guys that if whoever gets the certain number of votes, that thing will get funded. And so like last year we had things like uh, a new aquarium in Jacksonville. We had another one where um, mm. a new product this guy was doing. Um, the owner of the Jaguars, who's a billionaire, um, donated a million dollars towards the thing. It's it's really, really cool. It actually it got a lot of uh, interest outside of Jacksonville. They held one in Berlin, uh, Germany as well last year. Um, they've done it now two years in a row, and I've missed both of them due to being at a conference uh, over in Europe both times. But I can't wait to be there this April. They've got a whole like speaker summit and the dude from um you know the TV show uh, uh Shark Tank or yeah Shark Tank yeah or Dragon's Den in the UK yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the guys on Shark Tank in the US um oh, I just forgot his name but he's the he's the guy behind the the clothing line Fubu um oh yeah Damon Jones Damon yeah. yeah he's gonna be he's one of the keynote kind of speakers for a whole speaker summit kind of mm-hmm. a thing so uh, yeah I, th- I think this whole like micro business kind of a thing is is just gonna get to be bigger and bigger and bigger and it's um than than it is today so yeah providing a lot more op- options for people yeah no for sure yep. cool cool set of predictions yeah they're you've got your three I've got my three so my first one was that I think that SharePoint developers are gonna become more legacy if you stick your heels in the ground and try and stay with being a SharePoint quote unquote <laughs> developer being on prem or even in the cloud uh, yep. I think you're gonna see uh, Microsoft developers generally have a, a more openness to different um, platforms and different technologies and being able to leverage things that are not just Microsoft E. Um, really an adoption of the open source uh, uh, community a lot more. Uh, and then the last one is that I think that we're going to see uh, companies having much more point solutions, um, uh, being much more embraceive of point solutions and startups and um, these Kickstarter style companies and stuff. Hmm. And uh, and mine were cloud price wars slow down, Apple Watch only moderate success, and year of the cord cutter. Yep. So we'll jot these down and we'll mark ourselves in a year's time. We'll do it again. It'll be fun. Rock it. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, this is uh, episode sixty-two. We've gone. Uh, we've now been doing this for longer than a year. We've got you know over sixty episodes in our belt. So at some point next year, we're going to hit episode one hundred and. Maybe we need to have a little bit more of a party and fun about it than we did our our 52nd episode and one year anniversary. Yeah, I think drinks should be involved. Let's uh, let's make some wild accusations while drinking on the show. I That'd be awesome. Totally, we should definitely get some helium involved in there and some sort of <laughs> some sort of a farm animal. <laughs> oh, steady on! <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of those parties. So, nice. all right, everybody, I say Happy New Year to you. You'll get this uh, the first week of uh, January. Happy New Year to you, and I guess forget about 2014. We're looking forward. Yeah, hopefully a fruitful year coming up. There we go. 
All right. Cheers. Cheers. If you have a question for us, go to microsoftcloudshow.com slash questions, where you can submit it as text or record it as a WAV or an MP3 file and provide a link so that we can play your question on the show. You can subscribe to us in iTunes by searching for the Microsoft Cloud Show or via RSS at microsoftcloudshow.com, where you'll also find a full transcript and show notes of each episode. You can find us on Facebook searching for the Microsoft Cloud Show or on Twitter at MS Cloud Show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.